We've just had the most amazing day. We have hiked through snow and mountains and ended up going to Lago Rosas. And now, welcome to Monte Vecchio. Monte Vecchio is a small, beautiful town on a hill near the base of Lake Como. So, now that you know where we stayed, there's little guessing as to the first activity that we did. For our day at Lake Como, we initially planned to show you its tranquil coastline and beautiful old buildings painted in pastel colours. So not to disappoint, we will start from there and then lead to the more traumatic part of our day trip to the lake. as they have lots of very pretty lanes in between buildings. After a nice stroll around Bellagio, we decided to sit down for lunch. So right now we're in Bellagio and we found the restaurant Rossi. One suggestion that mum made was that after lunch, we should go for a swim in the lake. I love this. The water was a tad cool, but really nice as it was a hot day. I'm currently swimming in the famous Lake Como at Bellagio. After a quick swim, it was time to then catch the ferry back to Verana. It was here that within a split second, a calm day became quite eventful. It all started with a sudden windstorm that caused large waves in the lake. Fortunately, we had an amazing captain who was able to deal with the windstorm. However, in a split second, the captain and everyone on board was confronted by another problem. Two people kayaking in the lake were also caught by the storm. One lost his paddle and the other one was capsized and swept away from his kayak. The man without the paddle was calling out to the boat to help as he lost his friend and could not see him. Immediately the boat crew started moving the ship around to try and spot the other person amongst all the high waves. All of the passengers on the boat started running to the sides to see if they could spot the missing person. After a little while, one of the crew actually spotted the missing person. Fortunately, the man in the water was wearing a life vest and was okay, although he was being bounced around by the waves. Initially, one of the crew used a long pole with a hook to try and catch the person in the water. Fortunately, another little power boat nearby that also heard the call for help by our captain came rushing into the area to help. As it was smaller and easier to drive, the little boat very quickly helped the person in the water and went to help the other floating on the kayak. When the person in the water was rescued, everyone on the ferry clapped and cheered the crew on the two boats. This would be the first time in 10 minutes that all of the passengers did this. When we arrived at Verena, the captain was confronted by another problem. The winds were still very strong and making it really hard for the ferry to be docked. So, still unsure how, the captain used a large pole that was sticking out of the water and essentially ran into it sideways. 
This allowed the ferry to become aligned with the pier to its front, and quickly drove forward into it. When we drove into the pier, the captain kept the engines running whilst the rest of the crew were tying lots of big ropes. In a few moments, the ferry was secure, and both the cars and the people were able to leave. Once again, all the people on the boat started cheering the crew. Although the crew was amazing, all four of us were really happy to be back on land. We treated ourselves to a restaurant that had the highest rating on TripAdvisor for the area. We were very lucky that it was only 400 metres away from our apartment, and we could walk there. The restaurant definitely lived up to its reputation. A bit of ginger. <laughs> and some salt. finally caught up with us the second that we walked into the restaurant and it stayed for the night. Luckily, as we were going to the restaurant, a very nice old lady called Maria, who also lived in the apartment block, lent us four umbrellas. Maria was also the lady who helped us when we first arrived. The next day, we brought her flowers as a thank you. She broke into tears as nobody has ever brought her flowers before. Whilst in Monteverkia, Mum and Dad decided to take a drive to another small farming town near Lake Como. It's called a ranch, so it's got horses, obviously. And? I don't know, a playground? Really? Oh, cows! Is that what you do in a ranch with horses? Chickens? What do you do in a ranch with horses? Ride them. Sorry? Ride them. Oh, there's a donkey. Look out, we're going horse riding, I think. <gasps> really? Thank you! Would you like to? Yes! lesson came with an extra bonus. It was also an Italian lesson. The instructor, who was actually from Poland, could not speak English. So Dad had to jump into the arena and translate everything she said. Although he did need a translator as well as he did not really know the horse riding terms in either language. Initially, Raquel went to the bigger horse called Quendo. Quendo was a retired jumping horse, but it was very gentle. Poppy instead started riding a medium pony called Angeline. She was a very nice horse, but also very stubborn. So after a little while of Angeline being stubborn, the instructors decided to swap horses between Raquel and I. Angeline was indeed a tad stubborn, but little did she know that she had met her match Although we did have the odd stands off, Angeline quickly learned who was the boss. I was initially a tad scared of Quendo as he was huge. But because I couldn't tell the instructor that I was scared, I just went along with it. 
I'm glad that I did, as I absolutely loved Quendo. Even if I felt like I was sitting on top of a mountain. I really loved my horse riding lesson. It was lots of fun and I learned lots of new riding exercises.